let's start from the stack itself and let's try to see how to feed the anode with singles. An option that is the most diffused uh, in this kind of system is to feed it with what is the offcast of a steam metal reforming. So the same reaction that usually occurs inside the stack can be enhanced in a specific reactor designed for that, what is called a steam metal reformer. This is a chemical reaction that usually operates at high temperature, typical temperature of the um, uh, of this kind of reactor. It's around 600 degrees, so close to molten carbon and fuel cell uh, temperature. And it's a reactor that is fed with steam and methane to enhance the steam methane reforming reaction. Uh, but of course, uh, we usually uh, appreciate if the action uh, gets inside the reformant at high temperature, so we need to have a full heater. And usually, if we need to flow this gas, we need a, a sort of blower or compressor. And uh, in case we use a dirty uh, natural gas, for example, from, from landfill gas, or if we use uh, grid natural gas that usually is uh, as sulfur compounds for safety, for the smell, uh, we need to um, uh, introduce a desulfurization because sulfur is a poison for this kind of fuel cells, for especially for nickel-based um, fuel cells. For the steam, of course, what we need is to uh, produce steam. We, so it's a water input for the system that requires steam generator that is fed directly to the, to the reactor. In terms of anode, of course, uh, anode of gases, we usually have this small amount of hydrogen that usually is um, um, uh, combusted in a, in a specific reactor that is a burner. So we usually flow air into this reactor and we'll uh, understand why, because the air will react, the oxygen there will react with hydrogen. And what we will have, it is going to be a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide and steam. And this is a very good uh, inlet gas for the kettle. So what usually uh, we do in molten carbon full cell system is to use the off gases of the burner to feed the cathode. And what we get outside from the cathode is typical of gas of, of a power system that is nitrogen, steam and uh, a small amount of carbon dioxide and of oxygen that did not react. What we can do with this flow that is at high temperature is to um, uh, use a regenerator or recover part of the heat inside to, to produce uh, the steam, so for the steam generator and from the breather of the natural gas. And what we have usually is an exhaust flow that still contains some heat. That's why usually multi-carbonate fuel cells are used for cogeneration applications. So we have an electrical output that comes from the uh, stack and we can also thermal output that we can recover from the exhaust gas. Uh, in general, we can identify an area called outbox that involves all the high temperature operating system. So it's reformer, uh, the stack and the burner. And usually we can optimize uh, thermal um, um, equilibrium of these three components that uh, improves the stability, thermal stability and, the, and the, uh, can fit also the reaction since, for example, the reformer is an endothermic react reactor while the burn burner, of course, is an exothermic reactor. But what is required, of course, is a very high quality optimization. Uh, of course, what are the advantages of this kind of system? High efficiency, usually 47%. High level of system integration. Integration with biogas, for example, and say carbon dioxide separation is possible from anode of gases. Uh, this requires a little bit of modification of the layout we saw, but we can separate carbon dioxide uh, from the off gases before uh, getting into the burner. Of course, cogeneration is possible from exhaust. Um, there are, of course, also open issues or problems. Of course, till now, system cost is mainly related not to molten carbon and fuel cell, but to all the, all the other components and the integration of this kind of system and the risk of contamination from sulfur. We saw that desulfurization is introduced in the system and this becomes a extremely um, important component because any sulfur that gets to the reactors, to the reformer or to the fuel cells, uh, generates a very quick degradation of performance with no chance to recover. As I told, the 
thermal integration requires high optimization. Uh, what's it's so interesting at about, about multi-carbon and food cell systems is a new idea that was recently developed, is the idea of using cathode of multi-carbon and food cell with the exhaust of a power plant. Why? Because we usually have a huge problem that a power plant exhaust is a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. And if we want to separate carbon dioxide, it's very difficult to separate, especially from nitrogen. So what we usually need is a very um, complex and uh, energetic uh, system uh, of technology that usually require a big amount of energy to separate carbon dioxide of nitrogen. But multi-carbonate fuel cell may offer an interesting solution because if we consider the technology itself, as I described uh, before, uh, we can uh, look to the cathode inlet gas. Uh, we consider before the recirculation from a burner that is exactly somehow similar to what we want to do because we usually want to use the off gases of a power plant that is in general the product of a combustion so of a mixture of oxygen nitrogen and carbon dioxide so what could be the design of our system of course in this case at the inlet of the cathode we have the um, same thing as the inlet, inlet of the end but what we can use is a power plant exhaust for the cathode and in this case, what we can, uh, we will not need to feed the cathode with the, um, with the uh, exhaust of the burner, but we need a two process. We can need a condenser to separate the steam and then a CO2 separator that allows to separate carbon dioxide. But in this case, it's much easier because the mixture does not contain any nitrogen. What is left is hydrogen that we can usually burn to uh, make all the thermal balance of the system as described above. So the result of this system is uh, um, uh, this kind of system design, for example, in which we have um, a mixture containing nitrogen and carbon dioxide out of the power plant and we keep uh, uh, the nitrogen remains in the cathode exhaust while CO2 is separated because at the end the multi-carbonate fuel cells acts as a membrane for separating carbon dioxide from the cathode to the anode. So we can have a concentration of carbon dioxide in the anode of gases that allows us with a two-step separation with a very easy process. So what are the advantages of this kind of solution? Of course, compared to all other carbon capture technologies, uh, CO2 separation will be a multi-carbon and full cell do not require any additional power. Indeed, new power is produced with high electrical efficiency. What are the issues, of course, is that usually this requires a repowering of the plant. So uh, multi-carbon and full cells uh, is not a small plant for post-processing, but becomes a pretty important plant. So uh, it has to integrate with the strategy of repowering of the site itself. And uh, multi-carbonate fuel cell, in this case, needs to operate with high carbon dioxide utilization, and this requires so uh, optimization of the technology or of the operating conditions. And here again, cost of multi-carbonate fuel cell is high, but lower uh, compared to other kind of system, especially if we consider the total cost of ownership, because we have an active system, we produce electricity, we can sell electricity so we can uh, uh, introduce the technology in a more complex scenario in which we can make uh, extremely um, interesting economic uh, evaluation. Thank you.